Welcome back guys to part three of the introduction to C Sharp and .NET. Um, yeah, so where we left off the last time was um, with variables uh, and data types. So what we're going to discuss uh, for part three is uh, classes and methods or functions. So uh, what is a class? A class in programming terms is what yeah most of the the best definition for it is uh, saying that it is a blueprint of something so you have to think of it as um, uh, a big yeah blueprint drawing of something you want to create so for example um, well we don't create animals but we're going to take an animal as an example um, you know uh, uh, an animal has certain characteristics like if it has a tail or if it has teeth big teeth or you know if it's a, a predator or herbivore etc 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 so um, it's basically a sort of um, a design um, for what you're trying to build and it's the same in programming terminology so a class is basically a brute blueprint of something that you want to create now, in real programming principles you won't create a cow or a chicken class for example um, you would create something like a data processor class but you know you have to think in blueprints and in um, plans basically to create what you want to create so uh, last time we created a cow class, if you can remember. As you can see, our class is looking rather empty. So, a class consists in C Sharp of multiple things. Um, it consists out of fields and properties, but I'll do that in another part. But I want you to be aware that those things exist. Um, if you're looking at certain example code, um, it also exists out of functions or methods. So a method is basically a action of the class, what it's trying to do. So if we take a cow class here, for example, uh, yeah, a usual thing for a cow to do is basically to moo. Huh? If it's in the field, it moves sometimes. So what we'll do is we'll create a function inside of this class and everything between these curly brackets here, this is also called um, a co compound statement. So these curly brackets are is called a compound statement. And what that means is everything between these curly brackets is part of that class. So the same goes for the namespace. So we've created a namespace test console application, what we discussed in the first part of the video. Everything lives, what you create between this, these brackets lives in the namespace and everything between these brackets lives inside of the class, the cow class, for instance. So we're going to create a method here. Now there are some things that I'm going to type which might confuse you, but I will uh, first type out the method and then um, I will explain the parts that I'm typing. So first again, a keyword, which I discussed in previous topics is something deep embedded into the kernel. So we have a public void uh, moo. And then what we do with the same with the main method you saw in the previous class is um, create curly brackets around it. And why we need to create these curly brackets is for something which is called incoming parameters or arguments. But that will be discussed in a later topic. So first of all, I will dissect what I've just written so you can understand. Um, so first of all, the public keyword. 
the public keyword means that this function is accessible everywhere um, in the system from the cow class. So it's publicly visible for all other parts of code you're writing. And I will show you an example in a minute. So you also have different keywords for this. And this is what is called a access modifier. But again, too much information. I will explain later uh, in another topic what these access modifiers entail, what they mean, and what the difference is between them. Now we also have the keyword void. And void basically means what the return type is. So this part of uh, the function slash method is um, yeah, the return type. Um, and the return type here is void, which means this function doesn't return anything. So it doesn't give anything back if you call this function. And calling the function I will do in a minute after I've explained what the part of the function is. But just remember, this function is everywhere visible. It's also not returning anything. And yeah, the moo is basically in yellow, the name of the function. And the curly brackets is basically the, the arguments or incoming parameters, but we haven't dis, um, def defined any. But again, we'll, I will discuss this in a later topic. So, and again, as you can see, there's curly brackets here and that means everything between these curly brackets between this compound statement will be executed if you call this function and calling this function is also called invoking a method or a function um, so for now on in this video i will just call it a function not to get any more confusion um, okay so What's this function going to do? What we're going to do in this function is use the console again. Again, it lives in system namespace. Um, and we're going to write a line. Again, putting the value of a string in it, into it and saying move. Also, we want to see what's projected on the screen. So we have to say read line. Okay. Now, you can also add an access modifier on the class itself. But if you do not define one on the class, it automatically chooses protected. Again, later in a different part of the video, not this video, but another part, I will explain more about these access modifiers, what they entail. And for now, it's too much material to discuss in one video. So I will just add public, same as this function. And now I want to call this function, but I can't call it inside of the function itself. So what do I need to do to call this function? Let's go back to our main function in the program CS, which we uh, got at the start of this uh, project that we created. What we have to do is something called instantiating a class or initializing a class. No. You're thinking, what the hell does that mean? It basically means we're um, building something from the ground up. Right? Now, for a cow, it's quite a, uh, a weird <laughs> construct, but say you're creating a building, you know, you need uh, a foundation, you need bricks, you need cement, etc., to uh, basically create this, um, yeah class or as they say an object that's where the whole object oriented programming comes from 
So it's also referred to as an object. All right, so how do we do that? So first we declare a variable. So var uh, takes any type. Uh, and we call it cow. And then we initialize slash assign it with new cow. And then the curly brackets. And as you can see, we have initialized this cow the variable. And you can also say cow like this. Programmers are lazy and you can just type far in C sharp slash dot net. What you have is a cow object. So we initialized, created it. We do that by doing the keyword using the keyword new, right? So we're basically creating a new instance of cow. Now, next step is to invoke something on our cow, which is moon, right? Again, curly brackets dot comma to end the line. And what happens is. Save the files. If I run this now, it will project Moo on the screen because it's invoked this method. And a useful tip with F12, you can jump into this method. Sorry, function. I was going to call it function <laughs> um, and see what it does. So if you press F12, see, you jump to the cow class uh, and you can see. the code that we've just written. That's called a reference, which you can see here as well. Click on it and you can see, okay, where is this moo function being used? Used in the programs, yes. Okay, so let's run this bad boy. And again, what will happen is we'll see moo being projected on the screen. Moo is being projected onto the screen. Okay. So that's basically a, a class and a, a function. Now, back to this function, we can change some things to see the different behavior. So first off, let's change the return type. All right, so let's say this moo um, returns a string. So how, you, how do you make it return a string? You type in string. Also a handy tip, this whole construction here, so the access modifier, the return type, method name and the, the braces are together called a method signature. This is the signature of the method or function. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So now it's giving us a red line on Moo and it's saying not all code paths return a value, which is correct because we're not giving back a string value in Moo. So how do we do that? At the most of the time at the end of the line of code between the compound, you type in return, also a keyword. You're saying, hey, this function needs to return something. And then you return string value. Now you can do this in two different ways. You can um, say I am a cow like this. 
Okay, this is what's called a hard value because you're not assigning it first to a variable, right? So what you can also do is assign a variable first saying, am I bad variable name, uh, a cow, I don't know, just do something simple, a cow is, and then I am a cow, and what you can do now is say return a cow. This is also a, a possibility. So you can first store it in the variable and then return it, or you can just give the hard value back. So that's what's called returning a value. And what you can do now is for example, this method, see, it says it returns a string. And what you can do is basically say var i a cow is. So you're thinking, huh, how, how is this possible? Uh, uh, you're assigning a variable to a, a, a function. Well, you can do that if your function returns something. So what happens is, in this a cow variable, the value inside mu that is being returned is stored in this variable a cow in program.cs. Okay. So again, in this variable, it's returning a cow, which is assigned to I am a cow, and then you can say the value that's being returned here, I can catch it in this variable. All right. Now, back to other things, what we also can do is you use the keyword called static. And static basically means that you do not need to initialize a class. You could call it directly. And you need to do that for the function and for, uh, because right now it's saying not call cow because you've created an instance even though it's static. So static means you can call this all the time without first instantiating the class slash object. So do now is make the class static as well. And now also you can see you cannot create an instance of the static class cow because it's static. You, you can't, it's, it's basically a pole and you want to move the pole, but it's stuck in the ground. You, you cannot, cannot recreate the pole because it's stuck. Unless you maybe pull it out, but you know, we, you don't have to think about it so far. <laughs> so that basically means that you don't need to instantiate a variable. You can just say cow dot moo. See? Now you're thinking, okay, why don't I just make everything static? Well, that's a bad way of working because um, it also has to do with the memory allocation because when you instantiate that class, it also, um, adds uh, the class in memory so that means you you have that in your uh, memory bank when you initialize it and um, to basically make everything static it would cause a lot of performance problems as well and a lot of mo more things but I won't go into detail but it's just a it's just not a good way to work especially with very complex uh, programs. So right now we're just writing something simple, but yeah, imagine you're creating, instantiating 200 classes. And if you do that all static without having any memory control or storing it in memory, um, yeah, your, your code will just explode and you probably need a fire extinguisher to, to get rid of the smoke because it's using so much of your RAM. So this is, that's just a bad way of working. Um, but for some cases it can be useful 
and it's mostly to do with code that you are going to reuse. That's most of the time why it's static. So um, say for example this move method, I'm going to use it in this class program, but also in uh, another um, class, but in a different project. Then, you know, uh, I don't want to um, keep instantiating those classes, I just want to call it directly. It also depends on what the function does, but that's basically the reason why it's static. So. Yeah, I think for now, this is uh, a good lesson. So a recap, we've created a class, which is a blueprint of an object you're trying to create. So, well, you, we used cow and a cow moves. So it's a function. So it, it basically uh, um, yeah, gives us cer certain behavior. Uh, we also uh, explained a little bit about access modifiers. Um, the static keyword and what a method or function signature is uh, in detail uh, and how to call a uh, static and non-static function slash class from a different class file so for now i think this is a good lesson to wrap up because otherwise the video will be really long but um yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned anything. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. I'm always willing to help uh, with DM, uh, direct messages through Discord or any other uh, forms of communication. So please feel free. Uh, we can also have a, a, a call session on Discord if you have any questions or you're stuck on something or you found things confusing that I explained, please feel free to call me and I will do my best to explain it. Yeah, to the best of my abilities, basically. So thank you, and uh, hopefully till next time. Bye.